you know how frustrating it could be when you see, whether it's yourself or you see others doing this, where everybody gets so caught up in having to be right, they get so caught up in whipping out their tallywack or their clitoris maximus, whatever, and they all try to get into a pissing contest. And the thing is, everybody's got a point, and everybody's wrong somewhere, but everybody's too goddamn stupid because they get caught up in their feelings and or emotions on this. And they just so stubbornly cling in. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're right because I'm right here. It doesn't matter that you're right because I'm right there. And it's just stupidity. It's the human way. But it's so frustrating when you see it because you're like, can, can you not give a little ground? Can you not concede a fair point? Can you not compromise? Or most importantly of all, the old thing of agreeing to disagree and then moving the hell on with your lives. And I think about this whole lawsuit with Dr. What's his name? Dr. Amon and suing CM Punk for what is it? Libel and defamation of character for some of the things he talked about on the Colt Cabana podcast, if you remember, a few years back. This is just one of these situations where you ask all parties involved, what do you have to really, truly gain here? Now, when you say for the WWE's doctor, potentially a seven-figure payout and an alleged restoration of reputation, maybe that seems like something. And for CM Punk, maybe it's the validation of being right being able to go up against the WWE and the WWE machine and beating them and sticking it to them once again. I don't know what the hell it is, and frankly at this point I don't really care. This screams out to me one of these situations where everybody needs to grow the hell up and move the hell on with their lives. Like the most ridiculous thing about this to me is this has been literally a couple of years in the works. At some point in time, it feels like Vince, the WWE as a whole, should have went to Dr. Ramon and said, we don't need this. Honestly, you don't need this because if you're going to work with us, it doesn't matter anyways. We don't care. Here's seven figures. Shut the fuck up and move on with your life. And then tell CM Punk, look, maybe you have a point. But this does not need to go to court. Do not put yourself at risk when you do not need to. Let's agree to disagree. We will take care of the doctor. You stop talking about it and just move the hell on with your life. Like, that would seem to be to me the easy solution. Pay off the doctor, shut him up, and everybody move the hell on. Because at, what po at this point in time, what do you really win? Like, even if Punk lost this case. Does the doctor really win? No. If the doctor loses this case, does Punk really win? Not really. Because frankly, it's one of these things where people were going to take a side regardless of no matter what the evidence suggested or no matter what anybody said any damn ways. So why does it matter? And I look at this especially from a WWE standpoint and also frankly from a CM Punk standpoint. It has been almost four and a half years since the dude last appeared in WWE. At what point in time do you allow that to go? What point in time do you say, all right, we're done with that. Let's close the book on that chapter and move the hell on with the rest of our lives. Like I look at CM Punk and people want to say, well, he doesn't do this. He doesn't need to do that. He doesn't do this. If he didn't really truly need the money then he wouldn't be trying to do the UFC and getting a mid-six-figure payout to get his ass whooped in two minutes. And I mean that seriously. He wants to go play fantasy fucking fighter? Fine, do that. Because of the ability that he had to make himself some type of star in professional wrestling, he was able to generate and be able to eventually exercise leverage, which is critical. That's what this world is all about. It is about leverage. And CM Punk had it. And I do not begrudge him for going and getting himself paid and getting himself paid as much as he possibly can for something that he had absolutely no business doing. And don't sit there and tell me, well, you got to respect him for this. You get two and a half years to train for something and go into an octagon and get your ass whooped for two plus minutes. 
you'd probably be willing to do that for less than half a million freaking dollars. Oh, people know you got your ass whooped. Oh, they know you're all overmatched. Who gives a shit? Fuck you, pay me. No, it's not some heroic thing. It's some dude that got burnt out and worn out from wrestling and the dealing with the WWE shit, understandably so. A guy that was a star but thought he was a bigger star than what he really was and should have been a bigger star than he actually was or actually could have ever been. It was sour grapes and he wanted to pick up his ball and go somewhere else. And again, he had the leverage to be able to do that. That is fine. I do not begrudge him for that. That is cool. Do it. You get one life. Take the chance. Take the opportunity. If UFC is dumb enough to give it to you and put you on a main fight card, then why the hell not play fantasy freaking fighter? Cool. But we're talking about almost four and a half years after leaving WWE. CM Punk has had exactly one UFC fight. And there's a reason for it. Because he's not any fucking good. It's just not his thing. He gave it a shot. He sucked. Move the hell on. But we're still trying to go down this path. And from the UFC standpoint, you can't blame him because they don't care about the quality of the product anyways when it comes to him because he's going to bring eyeballs on the product at a time that they desperately badly need it. So as a result, why wouldn't you utilize him? Why wouldn't you milk another fight out of him to get a decent pay-per-view payout? Why wouldn't you? But damn it, dude, what more do you have to prove? You're still at a point in time in your life where you could come back to wrestling, exercise leverage, not quite to a Brock Lesnar level, but still exercise leverage, do what you want, go where you want, when you want, and probably make as much money, if not more so, than you ever have before. He says you have to just solely be WWE. Nobody says you have to solely be a full-timer there and go through the whole grind of their road schedule. You could appear in ROH, you can appear in New Japan, you can appear on Impact if they're willing to pay for it. You can appear some in WWE. Utilize them all, make your money from as many places as possible. But you're talking about from Punk's standpoint, and again, you could talk about he's made money in this and that, and I'm sure he has, and I'm sure he's invested well, I'm sure he's saved somewhat well, but it is foolish at this point in time to cut himself off from potentially millions of dollars more for only really honestly a couple of more years work. A CM Punk return would be massive for professional wrestling, that's true. And it would also be massive for CM Punk's bank account. You've been away for so long, now everything is fresh about you once again. You can come back and make as much, if not more money than you ever have before in terms of Oh, I haven't seen him wrestle this guy. I haven't seen him wrestle that guy. He hasn't wrestled these dudes. He hasn't wrestled those dudes. I haven't seen him live in years. I've never been able to see him live at all. Oh, we've got whole new streams of merchandise, whole new pay-per-view matches, whole new television programs. All of these different things, especially with the increase in the amount of revenue the WWE is going to get exclusively just from the new television deals with USA Network for Raw and Fox. Fox! for SmackDown on Friday nights. Like, Punk would be a fool not to sit there and fake it till you make it and come the hell back to WWE, even if not full-time. Even if you're talking about short program from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania and then you go work some at New Japan. You're t still talking about seven-figure-plus shit for not a ton of work. That's the truth. And there is no question now, when you talk about the all-in event and talk about what tickets were sold to fans versus what tickets were sold to scalpers, there is no question that once it was strategically leaked that Punk would be there the day before in Chicago as part of the event before all-in on September 1st, that there were plenty of people that bought tickets to the show to go there in part to see Punk under the basic fundamental premise that he might make an appearance at the show and they don't know what he's going to do. So if you can get that after announcing an appearance like that, just an appearance even the day before, just a couple of days before tickets go on sale, imagine what you could do if a company has a couple of months to pump up your return. 
Imagine if you're CM Punk and you're thinking about Wrestle Kingdom next year and you've got the chance to go against an Okada or a Kenny Omega. You could even Cody Rhodes' is bitch ass. You could make money there. You could go to WWE. You could always work a program with Daniel Bryan. You could definitely work a program with AJ Styles. Imagine the heat and interest there might be for a Roman Reigns versus CM Punk feud. Like there is legitimately money to be made with the guy at this point. And to me, my opinion, my opinion, it is fucking stubborn, idiotic, and foolhardy to continue to deny yourself that when you can still do it. You could talk all this crap about, oh, your heart isn't in it. A lot of people's hearts aren't in what they do. But I guarantee you, for the amount of chop that CM Punk would even be looking at, or even a fraction of a percentage of it, we would find a way to slog through. CM Punk, shut up, stop bitching, stop fighting against it, nut up, and come back to wrestling where the fuck you belong. Stop going through fantasy fuck fight school. Stop sitting there and wasting everybody's damn time for something you're never going to be successful at. You tried, you failed, that's great, congratulations, move the hell on, and as far as WWE goes, you still have a chance, nip this shit in the bud, and get in touch with this dude. And even if you say you're just beginning the extension of relations and trying to bridge some of that gap and repair some of the damage for the bridges that were burnt, saying, hey, we view you as a vital part of our SmackDown property. When it goes on Fox next year, we would like to have you be a major part of that. If you don't want to be full-time, that's fine. Like, it's just one of these things. I look at it at this point. And if you want to back CM Punk, that's cool. Because like I said, there are reasons for him to feel like he's right. If you want to back the WWE and say F CM Punk, you have reasons to be right about that too. Ultimately, if the dude doesn't want to be there, then fuck him, the company moves on. And honestly, when you look at the television deals they just got, the deals they get with Saudi Arabia and some of these other countries they will continue to get a lot of shit ton of money for in order to perform there, they most certainly did not need CM Punk. So we've reached that point now where neither side really feels like they truly need each other. They should now want to work with each other to make as much money as possible from one another. If CM Punk never wrestles a day in his life again, I will be perfectly fine with that, believe me. But the wrestling business could use a positive injection of something different, interesting, and invigorating. CM Punk can provide that. It doesn't all have to be in WWE. It might not even need to be in WWE at all. But you grew up for so many years as a professional wrestler and you worked at it and you loved it. That love never really truly goes away. You can try and stash it away due to stubbornness and ego and sometimes, frankly, stupidity. But come on, punk. It's time to get over it. WWE, it's time to get over it. It's time to get CM Punk back in professional wrestling. There is nothing but positives that can come out of it for all parties involved. There is nothing but good, great, money-making things that can come out of it for everybody involved. He doesn't want to? Then fuck him. The business will continue to survive without him. Clearly, it does. But it could thrive a little bit better if the WWE got over themselves, Dr. Mon got over himself, and CM Punk got over himself, and they figured out a way to make it happen. Or if he doesn't want to go back to WWE and reach out to the Buffs, reach out to Omega, reach out to Cody, go take your ass to New Japan part-time, and you can make some nice money there too, and give the wrestling business a needed shot in the arm.